This is Joe Maciars from May Tutoring Enterprises. Today I'd like to uh, talk about graphing linear equations, specifically directly proportional and direct proportion. Uh, this is kind of a little bit of a repeat, repeat because it is just basically linear equations. In fact, it's a little simpler than the slope intercept form that we talked about. Uh, but I want to make sure I cover my basis because very shortly we're going to start heading into rational polynomials and rational functions and discussing all kinds of interesting stuff like that. So uh, let's head over to the uh, Apple Grapher, sometimes called the Mac Grapher, and uh, start to take a look at this particular uh, type of equation. Now let me remind you that our old friend y equals mx plus b, actually let me go ahead and get an m and a b out, so m is equal to, let's go with 1, and let's let b also equal 1, that should work, okay, okay, what did you, oh, it kind of had some weird symbol there, let's get rid of that symbol, okay, sorry about that, okay, so the y equals mx plus b, let's hit return, we get a, a line that looks a little bit like this, now, a direct variation curve is very, very similar to this type of uh, equation. Basically, we're going to have some constant, which in this case, let me make it a little different. Let's make this k equal 2 just to, to have something different. And um, we're going to have y equals k times x. This is the direct variation equation. And you can see there's a lot of similarity between that equation right there and that equation. In fact, the variable variables are x and y in both of them. The m and the b are the parameters in this equation, and the k is the parameter in this equation. Now, if we were to go ahead and just type in plus 0, then this looks almost identical to it. In fact, it is identical to it. The y-intercept, the b, is 0, and that means it's going to pass through this point, through 0, as opposed to through this point, which at this point is set to b equals 1. So it's passing through 0, 1. So a direct variation equation is simply an equation that must go through the origin. Okay. Now, there's a reason for that, and we'll talk about that, I think, right here at the end of the video. But uh, for right now, let's just go ahead and give you a quick little look uh, in case you didn't see the y equals mx plus b uh, video we'll show you what this one looks like. And uh, I'm going to turn off y equals mx plus b. We're going to highlight the k equals 2. We're going to come over to equation. We're going to animate that parameter. And we're just going to take a quick look at the settings here. We're going to change the settings to, well, let's go minus 8 to 8. Let's really go for it today. And uh, we're going to go by 41 steps. Alrighty. Let's hit the OK button. And we're ready to rock and roll as they say. Let's hit the, the uh, play button and you'll get to see what's going on. And uh, just like we had with y equals mx plus b, when the slope or the in this case the k value is positive, it will be rising up as we move to the right. If k is negative, then it will be falling as we move to the right. And that's exactly what you're seeing. When k is equal to 0, it'll be flat. You know, I should probably color this so you can see it going through the... Oh, come on now. Being a little difficult. All right, let's make it red. And there you can see it passing right through the x-axis. When k is equal to 0, it's y equals 0, and it's just a horizontal line. Okay? All right, well... That's it. That's all there is to this. There's, there's not much, much more. We are going to compare this to an equation that's very looks very similar to this. It, the equation we're going to look at is y equals uh, k over x. And that particular equation is actually a member of a number of different families. Uh, and depending upon how, the way you look at it, it, it kind of goes into different topics. Um, at least four that I can think of. So we will talk about some of that in the next video. But let's go back to this and, and talk about why this might have some importance over this particular equation. Specifically, this equation where b is not equal to zero. All right. Well, this will show up in geometry and basically anything that is 
um, well, as the words we talked about at the beginning of the video, directly proportional mean. Uh, what is directly proportional? Well, you, the deal is that if I let, let's just do a, a couple of interesting little uh, points here. And um, I guess we're going to need a new equation for this. So let's suppose that I let x equal um, 1. We'll just do something like that. Now, if x is equal to 1, what's the y value going to be? Well, right now, well, I guess that depends on the k value. So let's go, let's make ourselves a nice k before we go do that. So let, let's pick k. Can I get 3? No, I can't get 3. How about 4? Yeah, okay. Let's go with k equal 4. Good enough. All right. So um, if x is equal to 1 and k is, in fact, let's stop k. Because every time I click off of it, yeah, all right, let's go with k equal 2. That's even better. All right, so if k is 2, and we've put x equal 1 in there, then 2 times 1 will be 2. So our y value will equal 2. Simple enough. All right. Now, it's not going to like this. In fact, it's giving me some goofy equations. Let's ignore what it's graphing. Uh, this is just for your benefit here at home. Uh, now, let me suppose that I double the x value. That is, the x value previously was 1. If I double it, it'll be 2. What then will be the y value? Well, the y value will be whatever k is, which is 2, times the x value, which will be 2, and I will get y is equal to 2. Uh, sorry, <laughs> 2 times 2, I'm sorry. y is equal to 4. All right. So, again, let's turn that off. We don't care about the, the graphing. But what we notice is that when we doubled the x, we doubled the y. Again, let's start from this particular one, and let's now triple the x. Let's get a new equation and triple it. So x is equal to 3, because tripling 1 will get you a 3. What then will be the y? Well, k is 2, x is 3, 2 times 3 is 6. All right, so y is equal to 6. And you'll notice that when we tripled the x, let's again hit return. When we've tripled the x, we've tripled the y. That is a feature associated with a direct variation equation, and that's why it becomes so important. It gets used in things like similar triangles in geometry. So this is that behavior. So if we, for example, take all the measurements of a triangle and triple them, then basically what's happening is this equation has something to do with that, that particular type of transformation. By the way, that transformation would be called a dilation in uh, geometry. In algebra, we would simply call that a stretch. Okay. All right. Now, what I really want to, I shouldn't say really want to, I, I want to show you as opposed to that is what happens when we do the same type of thing here. Let me go ahead and uh, copy this, make a new equation, paste it down here. Um, except that this one's not going to be 2. Uh, we're going to pick uh, m equal to 1 and b equal to 1, just like we did previously. So now what will happen? When m is, uh, x is 1, we've got m. m is 1 times x, which is also 1. 1 times 1 is 1, plus b. Well, b is 1, so we get 2. So actually, this ends up being the exact same point as this. Okay, that's kind of a coincidence, but it's a nice little coincidence. We'll see if we can take advantage of that. Now we're going to go ahead and double x, just like we doubled x over here. What's going to happen to y? Do you think we're going to be able to double it? Let's find out. Okay, so here's our new equation. x is equal to 2. We're doubling x. What will y be? All right. Well, let's put 2 in. So if we put 2 in, m is 1. 1 times 2 is 2, plus b, but b is 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. And again, let's turn that off. 2 was not doubled. The reason it's not doubled, and it turns out it will never be doubled if b is not 0. So as long as b is something other than 0, this will not be a direct proportion equation. y will not be directly proportional to x. All right, let's just do one more just to convince you, because we did three on the other one. Let's do a third one here. Let's triple the original x. And again, just verify what happens. Let's, oh, I didn't really want to hit return there. 
Let me hit Y equals. Uh, there we go. All right, so now we're letting X be 3. M again is 1. 3 times 1 is 3 plus our B, but remember B is 1. 3 plus 1 is 4. So 4. We tripled the X. Did we triple the Y? The tripling the Y would have gotten us a 6. We did not. We got a 4. So that emphasizes that this equation is not directly proportional while this one is. So I've told you a little bit about you know, why this equation is important and why this one, well, it's, it, this is a, just a special case, of course, of, of this equation. Any one of these lines exists in the family of slope-intercepts. Now, just to end the video on, on uh, just one more little note, there is one more special equation to talk about, and it's actually a subset of this family, and that's the equation y equals x. Now, what's special about this equation? Well, of course, it is direct variation. That, that's definite. Um, one could say that basically this is uh, something that's not dilated or, or that is it's not stretched or compressed is the representation of this equation. Basically, if, for example, you put in a 1 for your x, you're going to get out a 1 for your y. If you put in a 2 for your x, you're going to get out a 2 for your y. Well, that actually then brings up the, the name that this function is used as and, uh, or, or talked about as, and that is the identity function. So another name for this function is simply the identity function. It's clearly a subset of the directly proportionals, which are also a subset of the linear equations. So that's it. We've really covered everything that there is to cover about directly proportional. I didn't really show you any applications of this, uh, but that would be a geometry lesson, maybe an advanced algebra lesson that we're not going to cover. So that's it for today. Let's go over to the final screens. If you've seen my videos, you're used to seeing those. I've got to find my little application. Uh, this was uh, an Apple Grapher uh, graphing calculator application uh, video. Uh, we talked about graphing the linear equations that were directly proportional and also called direct proportion. There's no real difference in those names, but I just wanted to cover both of those words because I know people will be looking up uh, either one or the other probably in about equal amounts. All right. So uh, my little business is A Tutoring Enterprise. I'm a tutor. Uh, that's my name, Joe Maciar. There's a little mug shot of me. I reduced it from some of the other pictures. wanted to fit a little bit more information in. Uh, my website, my email, my phone number, I'm an online and in-person tutor, and uh, I tutor in physics, math, chemistry, and engineering. So if you need some help, give me a call. Uh, we'll set you up and uh, hopefully get you some education. Um, please hit the like button, the la 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 like button. Please hit that. I always like that. All right, and if you really uh, like this video, if it helped you out in some sense, uh, Feel free to send me, you know, a little donation. Uh, if didn't help, then don't bother. Uh, maybe check out a few other videos. Maybe I got some good help for you over there. And uh, then let's just go to our final screen, which is going to be a white screen that has all kinds of little links coming up on it, giving you some past videos, some future videos, and, you know, who knows, maybe some other stuff in the future linking to other great stuff that I hopefully am going to try to do. So... I hope you enjoyed this video, and I, and I hope you're going to have a great day, and uh, thanks for watching.